Hey guys, welcome to Mako.org channel. As some of you already know, I am an online instructor and in one of my courses I teach Android app development. So some of the students have been facing a problem due to the new release of Android Studio and Gradle. In this video, I am going to show you the solution for that problem. So the problem is due to writing and executing plain Java codes. In the second session of the complete Android course, we have learned Java for the IDE or the software that we wanted to write and execute our Java codes in. We have used Android Studio, which is built upon the IntelliJ IDE. So if like before we try to create a new project from here by selecting this start a new Android Studio project and selecting this add no activity, we could have named our project in here. We could have specified a package name. We also could have specified the language. We also could have select a minimum API level. But in the new version of Android Studio, you don't have the option to use or not to use Android X artifacts. Using Android X is mandatory. Okay, let's uh, finish creating our project. So like before, if we go to app folder, in Java folder, in our package, if we create a new Java class, let's call it main. In here, if we write our main method, psvm and tab, if we print something, let's just say hello. And if we try to run our application, we should have seen this hello message in the console. But as you can see down in here in the console, we are getting the error. And the error says that the Gradle build features that we are using in this build are going to cause problem in Gradle 6. It is interesting because the Gradle version 6 hasn't been released yet. The latest version that has been released for Android Studio I believe is uh, 5.4 or something like that. It seems like a serious problem because the Gradle team are preventing some errors in future releases. Let's check the release notes for Gradle to investigate what is the problem. Let's search for Gradle release notes. As you can see in this page, the latest version of Gradle is 5.6.2, but this is not the latest version that has been released for Android. Gradle is being used for other programming languages and other technologies as well. The latest version for Android is 5.4.1 and if you want to make sure about that, you can check your Gradle wrapper properties. Let me minimize this uh, run pane. Inside Gradle scripts, down in here, Gradle wrapper properties, you can check your version of Gradle. You can also check the Android documentation for the latest version. I imagine you have updated your Gradle and also your Android Studio. And beside all of these, inside this build.gradle application module, you have updated the build Gradle to 3.5. You can check these versions from Android developers official website. So all of my tools are updated and the latest version for Android Studio is 5.4.1. Let me click on the release note for the latest version of uh, Gradle. Down in here inside this page, you can see a link to a guide for upgrading Gradle 5.x. If you click on that, you can see a guide for upgrading your Gradle tool. You can select this upgrading from 5.4 and earlier. And uh, here is the problem. You can see that by upgrading from 5.4 and earlier to the newest version of Gradle, there will be some deprecation. All of these are not related to us. I believe the thing that is related to us is this one in here, improved class path separation for worker processes. You can read this paragraph if you want, but basically what they say is that you can no longer execute plain Java codes inside Android Studio. You can read this paragraph if you want, but to summarize it, at the time of building your project, Gradle will create some background processes, which they call daemons. You can see the name in here. Up until now, that was possible to use both user codes and Gradle internals in that worker process, but it has been deprecated and from this point on, you can't use user code for Gradle inside that process. You can see in here that they say everything that rely on some system properties like java.class.path 
is going to be affected. So I think for that reason, we can no longer use plain Java codes and uh, the main method for Java classes inside Android Studio. There may be some other deprecation in this page related to that and other problems as well. But I think this is specifically the one that is causing problem for our issue. I showed you the process of searching for greater release notes and reaching out to this page to show you how you can uh, fix your problems in future if you have faced a similar problem. Okay, now that we can't write plain Java codes inside Android Studio, well, the other option is to use an IDE. The IDEs that are available for writing Java codes are Eclipse, IntelliJ, and maybe some others. But since we are familiar with the environment of IntelliJ IDE, I mean this exact IDE that Android Studio has been built upon, I'm going to install IntelliJ. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm uploading new content every day related to Android and other programming technologies. Okay, in order to install IntelliJ in our system, we need to go to JetBrains website. But before that, let me close Android Studio. We no longer need that. And let's search for uh, JetBrains. JetBrains is the company behind the IntelliJ ID and also a lot of other IDs. In the main page, you can see IntelliJ ID. You can uh, click on that and you can download it from here. Depending on your operating system, you can choose Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And down in here, we have two options. The community version, which is for Java Virtual Machine and Android development. It's free and it's enough for our need. But there is also an ultimate version, which you can use for web and enterprise development. If you want to install that, it would be something like $49 per month. But the community version is fine for our purpose as well. Click on download. I'm going to install the ultimate version, so I'm going to cancel it from here. After your download is finished, just click on IntelliJ installer. And from here, it should be a simple process. Click on next. In here, you need to select the destination folder. Mine is fine, so click on next. IntelliJ IDE can be used for Java, Kotlin, and also Groovy. For our purpose, Java is fine. I'm also going to check this 64-bit launcher. That would be helpful. I think that's enough for this step. Let's click on Next, Install, and it should be installed in our system. I'm going to pause the video in here, and I will come back when the installation is completed. OK, the installation is finished. Let's just run IntelliJ. I believe you have installed JDK or Java Development Kit previously, so I'm not going to cover that. If you want to check that process, you can check the video on setting up the environment. OK, let's click on Finish. I had previously installed IntelliJ on my system and I have uninstalled it for this video. Let's don't import anything and start from scratch. Let's select Light for the theme and let's select a Skip Remaining and set Default for all the preferences. If you are installing the community version of IntelliJ, you shouldn't see this window, but since I'm installing the ultimate version, I'm seeing this. Let's just go with the trial for now, and let's go with evaluation. They are giving me 30 days of trial. If you previously installed JDK on your system, you are good to create a new project. If you haven't, once again, you can check the video on setting up the environment. OK, let's create a new project. If you are using the community version, you shouldn't see all of this, but you probably should see Java up in here. Let's select Next. We don't need the template, so let's select Next once again. In here, you need to name your project. I'm going to stay with this name since it's not a real application. Let's just click on Finish, and our application should be built. You can see that the IntelliJ environment is a lot like Android Studio. We can see the project pane in here. We can also navigate through different folders. Inside this source folder, we can create our Java class. Let's say new Java class. I'm going to name it main as before. Let's also maximize and uh, enter the full screen mode. Let's just write the main method in here, psvm and pressing tab. As before, let's just print hello. 
and let's run our application and see if we can overcome that problem that we had inside Android Studio. As you can see, we are seeing hello inside the console. That seems fine. So installing a new ID is one way of resolving that issue and also maybe downgrading the Android Studio itself. But I don't suggest that because the Gradle team are preventing the problems that are going to happen in the future. It seems like a serious thing. So you may want to install the community version of the IntelliJ which is free or maybe installing another ID like Eclipse. Okay, I hope this solved your problem. Just before I finish off this video, I'm going to ask you once again to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm going to upload new contents every day on Android app development and also other programming technologies. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I have 100 more hours of content like this in the format of a course on my website. To this day, 30,000 students have enrolled in the course and I believe if you want to learn Android app development in a professional manner, you would check the course at makeode.org. Besides Android app development, there are a lot more courses from me and other professional instructors on the website, like Java, Python, hacking and different kind of marketing, which you can check if you are interested. See you guys in the next video.